we're developing a pulmonary program to really help and support those individuals with the respiratory needs. So we have a lot of exciting things going on here that we'd love to show to all of you. If you have a few minutes, just let us know. Um, we're very happy and excited to have Barbara Smith here with us today. Uh, she's an occupational therapist that's been in the field for over 25 years, working with adults and children that have developmental disabilities. The first book she wrote, The Recycling Occupational Therapist, highlights um, how to design and fabricate activities for these individuals. Um, she never expected to work in geriatrics until her mother, Sarah, um, started showing the signs and symptoms of dementia. And she did what she does best. She got creative and designed some activities that would really benefit her mom's remaining strengths. Um, in Still Giving Kisses, um, she really pulls together those experiences. Um, and she's here today to share some of that with us. So please join me in welcoming Barbara. Thank you very much. My mother would have been thrilled to see me here today speaking about how close we grew during her eight years with Alzheimer's disease. When she moved to an assisted living facility in Massachusetts, I was suddenly able to visit her two or three times a week and realized that one of the benefits of the disease is that the person lives in the present and past conflicts are forgotten. My mother, Sarah Smith, was the daughter of East European immigrants who met through a matchmaker in Chicago. She kept kosher, loved Yiddish words, and must have seen or listened to Fiddler on the Roof at least a thousand times. <laughs> because my mother's Jewish identity was so important to her, you are going to learn a few Yiddish words today. So let me begin by saying that as I realized my mother was getting lost in her neighborhood and trash was piling up in her apartment, my response to the situation was, Oi, vet! <laughs> Who knows what that means? Oh, Any? My oh my goodness, no one knows? Oi, vet means oh no. Fortunately, as an occupational therapist, I was pretty good at recognizing the early symptoms of the disease. Here she was, 76 years old. She was burning food, and she had forgotten how to use the telephone. I believe that this is the most emotionally draining stage of the disease because one has to get over the hurdles of shock, denial, and depression and move into acceptance, taking action, and enjoying the remaining time together. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how I coped, <coughs> grew into my role as caregiver daughter, and got better and better at it with practice. First, I'm going to stop here for a few minutes and ask about your situations. Who here has a spouse with Alzheimer's or another dementia? Nobody. Who here has an older, an elderly parent, grandparent, aunt, uncle, or friend with the disease? Okay, maybe one person. And how many of you? I have two two parent. people. You have a parent. Okay, great. Thanks for coming. Uh, who's a healthcare professional here? Probably <coughs> lots of people. Healthcare professionals and occupational therapists. Okay, we have at least one occupation. Mm -hmm. uh, more than one. Great. Two occupational therapists. And how many of you don't remember why you're here? <laughs> okay. There's no one, no one's raising their hands, that's a good sign. Okay. As you know, I wear two hats. I was the daughter of an Alzheimer's victim and I am an occupational therapist. I use the past tense because my mother passed away about a year ago. And although I think about her a lot, and it's very sad, I am also lucky in many ways. For one thing, I know that I did everything I could to find the best care possible for my mother. I have no guilt and I have no regrets. I'm also lucky in that my mother always seemed to recognize me. Even two weeks before she passed away when she was barely eating, could not speak and had no use of her hands, my mother's face lit up when she saw me and she puckered her lips to tell me to bring my cheek over for a kiss. Hence the name of my book, Still Giving Kisses, A Guide to Helping and Enjoying the Alzheimer's Victim, 
you love. Puckering her lips for a kiss. What can be more emotionally significant than expressing her love using one of her few remaining motor skills? We occupational therapists like to look at what skills a person still has rather than only at the skills they have lost. I tried to help my mother maximize her remaining skills, be as independent as possible, and enjoy her life. I'm going to talk to you in a few minutes about the things I did to help my mother do just that. People who experience memory loss react in different ways. Some people seek out medical advice. They may read a few of the thousands of books out there about dementia. They may join a support group for people in the early stages of memory loss. My mother didn't have the awareness to do any of those things. She didn't find anything abnormal about wearing the same clothes day after day or forgetting how to change the television channels. This was not a surprise because my mother had always been Mashugana. Does anyone know what Mashugana means? No. I don't think so. Mashugana is another Yiddish word that means crazy. <laughs> Indeed, my mother had been obsessive compulsive neurotic, and socially awkward. While I was growing up, we frequently argued. Here she was, living in a senior citizen's apartment building located a mile away from my sister in Connecticut. It didn't offer any services other than an emergency button next to the toilet, and that button usually didn't even work. She had few social contacts other than my sister. Because my mother had forgotten how to cook, she walked every day to the nearby 7-Eleven to buy candy bars. Sometimes my sister's friends would see her wandering around lost and give her a ride home. I faced a crisis common to many middle-aged children. My mother lived far away from me and she was not going to cooperate. Again, I was really lucky because my sister and I worked well together as a team. We knew the first thing we needed to do was get help so that my mother could do her activities of daily living, such as dressing, grooming, eating something other than candy bars. My sister hired a home health aide while I looked for a new place for my mother to live. My husband disabled her car, <laughs> and we all came to terms with performing a kidnapping. I saw only misery ahead of me. Little did I know that I would grow to love and enjoy my mother in new and unexpected ways. I'm going to stop here and talk to you a little bit about 